What's up, everybody? I'm Caleb. And I'm Trevor. And welcome back to our show, Coffee and Headphones, where we talk about anything that two brothers would discuss, be it music, entertainment, basketball, or all of the above. This is our second episode out of a three-part series that we're doing. Um, basically, we are comparing Drake albums to Star Wars movie, the live action movies to be more specific. So um, very interesting. Again, I don't know if it's anything that's on the internet yet, but uh, leave it to us to bring it here. We're about to um, put it there. That's right. I like the Bulls cap, by the way. It's Thank solid. you, brother. Hey, man, we got to represent. I actually got tickets to see the Bulls. I haven't told you yet. Yes, sir. In Toronto. In Toronto. Um, shout out to the Blue Jays, by the way. One yesterday um yeah so yesterday we did part one where we talked about the prequel movies so be sure to go check that out if you haven't yet today we will be doing the original trilogy and then tomorrow we're going to be covering all of the disney movies um and if you don't know how this works basically it's pretty self-explanatory but we will just be taking elements and reasons that we think these drake projects remind us of these star wars movies and we'll be talking about it. And some we agree on, some we disagree on. And uh, we need you guys to tell us who's right and who's wrong. I'm right. Yeah, he thinks he's right. <laughs> okay, well, I guess without further ado, we should go ahead and get started. Let's do it. If you want to know what we have for the prequels, be sure to go and check that video out. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. We're talking about A New Hope first. And uh, you know what Drake album reminds me of A New Hope? Mr. Trevor? What is that, Mr. Caleb Frazier? That would be none other than 2011 classic, Take Care. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you laugh, but think about it. It's, it was the groundbreaking Drake album. It was the groundbreaking sci-fi movie whenever it was released, the original Star Wars in 1977. It was oh. almost like a completely new take on the genre, both hip hop and sci-fi. Because hip hop before, before Drake was uh, not very prone to showing a lot of emotion. Now there are exceptions like Outkast, not prone to showing a lot of emotion as far as like uh, sadness and vulnerability, not just like anger and joy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Take Care was really the first big step that Drake took in the vulnerable direction. Yes, he's had songs before where he's a little bit more. Uh, melancholy we should say i think that's a good word for it but this he was like heartbreak drake on full display uh it's an absolute classic take care for many people is regarded as the best drake album for others the second best for me the third best and uh star wars a new hope is regarded as the best star wars movie by a lot who don't say it's empire so i think um having both kind of groundbreaking results whenever they were released it's hard for me not to associate these two movies and uh excuse me this movie and this album it's fair it's fair comparison i uh you're welcome i already used up take care um but yeah no i agree as far as like um the new hope sort of being the groundbreaking thing for new sci-fi um before that i think it was like Flash Gordon and yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. TV series, there wasn't a lot of like really good sci-fi movies out there. Um, it wasn't like a new genre by any means, but it wasn't great. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Star Wars sort of falls, I believe it was like a year or two before the first Star Trek, which is considered one of the other biggest like sci-fi franchises that there is yeah. um george lucas did a lot of groundbreaking things and sort of frontiered what was going on in that genre at least for that time being yeah um, especially concerning like practical effects he yeah. really made sci-fi go from cheesy to looking like not realistic i feel like that's the wrong word for it but looking presentable absolutely absolutely yeah and like the CGI behind it. And if you have ever seen any of like the in-depth stuff about how they did that and the time that it took, um, it's sort of crazy. Um, it was definitely new as far as special effects go. I don't want to say new, but it was something that wasn't mainstreamed as far as like how they would 
set everything up and they had like these tiny sets and that was super normal but the lighting the effects the the way yeah. you know, it yeah. was completely different similar um, to drake similar to drake and that's where we agree or we disagree is on groundbreaking um i think take care what but it wasn't like drake's first groundbreaking album because realistically as soon as drake came out um if we exclude Drake um, came out yeah he did uh, that makes sense yeah as soon as we exclude um what's it called comeback season we exclude those and some of the hear me out okay <laughs> <laughs> we're not even doing comeback season i uh, know exactly and some of the the singles and, and the mixtapes and the deep dives of drake prior to doing any type of project that was recorded in a studio and put out and that was mainstream so far gone is like the first album that drake has right so i had no other choice but to compare so far gone to a new hope you know i'm not mad i'm not mad at it you shouldn't be you shouldn't be because that's, it's like that's the one valid argument you have for this comparison it was different from mainstream because like before that you had let's see in 2008 i, I pulled up like billboard top 100s right and the closest Can I guess yeah yeah go ahead are you gonna say the closest thing to that style uh-huh uh i don't know like t-pain stuff sort of but t-pain was more doing like bartender and i don't know when that song came out necessarily but like t-pain was doing stuff that hit the club a lot even yeah. though he had some sap songs i mean the closest that i could find and maybe this is a hot take as far as like in your feels and understanding like what's going on but like still having some bangers was kid cuddy that's fair so, i was i was hoping you wouldn't say 808s because that's no, kind of a separate entity no but heartbreak was top 100 um day and night swagger like us whatever you like a mm -hmm. milli right yeah like all those are amazing like probably anybody from that area that listened to mainstream music could at least quote one of those songs a couple lines and those are ingrained in us especially this generation yes so far gone came out right after all of that and drake had no choice like if that would have flopped that probably would have been the end of his career we would have seen drake back on De degrassi you yeah. know and like same with george lucas because i believe george lucas had other projects prior to star wars yeah weren't as they didn't go as good, right? No, I mean, it was like low budget indie stuff. Yeah, I couldn't name you one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm coming from with the comparison. Like, I believe George Lucas's budget for the first Star Wars was between 10 and $13 million, which in like today's world is not a lot of money. But back then, it's a decent amount of money for a sci fi movie. Yeah. Um, Drake had a decent budget for so far gone for the marketing with that as well um and it was like neither of them really had the choice to flop on that if yeah. either of them would have flopped we probably wouldn't have the dynasties that we have today as far as like ovio and drake and george lucas and lucas films you know so yeah that's fair that, that's where i'm coming from i'll, I'll also say I, I just checked by the way it was 11 mil for a new hope so uh, that checks out i'll also say like a new hope kicked off the original trilogy i also feel like take care kicked off the best trilogy of drake's uh career between that nothing was the same and if you're reading this it's too late that three album run or three project run incredible there's really not um too many hip-hop artists that have a three album run like that at drake least, and kanye like, that's what yeah, yeah maybe if we're doing like the carters Lil Wayne yeah but he had um, projects in between the Carter mm -hmm, series so mm -hmm. and like Drake and Kanye are the only two that I can really think of I'm sure there's more that I'm just missing um but yeah that's sort of where I'm at with I that. guess Kendrick as well oh yeah that's true 
if we don't count Untitled in the three album run from Good Kid to Damn is crazy. And I want to say Cole too, just because I think Cole is an amazing artist, but realistically, like if we're talking- It's not the same level. It's not, and but that doesn't mean I wouldn't put them in the top five of this generation, but- right. But that's not the conversation. No, the, that's a different I, pod. I had to put the disclaimer because yeah, and while, while you're disclaiming, I should also disclaim. Obviously, 808s preceded "Take Care," and it was very emotional, very vulnerable. But for me, I kind of removed that from the genre of hip hop. So that's kind of why I, I don't think about it when I think about the first kind of groundbreaking, vulnerable project. Favorite song from "Take Care." Yeah. No, you got to say favorite song from Nothing Was the Same, and good luck with that. That's not my choice, though. I'm doing Take Care. Oh, yeah, I'm tripping. My fault. <laughs> the reason I thought that's what you said. Favorite song from I'm Take not Care. not all the way here today. <laughs> uh, for me, it's Underground King. Uh, <laughs> classic. I don't know if I asked how I got my nice things. What? Probably mentioned this yesterday, but um, Successful has to be like, maybe my favorite song on that album but wait what song successful on so far gone oh okay yeah and uh congratulations the calm the calm is something that lives in my head rent free for some reason and it wasn't the most popular song on that album by any means but it is like almost such a concept that i just think it's really cool to be put into an album like that that went so mainstream true now favorite scene from the movie do you want to go first or you want me to go first you can go first i mean i i, I can't not say great shot kid that was one in a million i mean what a great moment you know I, I love harrison ford man i love the character of han solo even though he doesn't uh that moment is classic it's like one of the pinnacle defining moments of star wars and luke's life and everything so um i'd say that's up there for sure uh i just think a new hope is such a different movie from all the other ones yeah that it's hard to pinpoint a specific you want to hear a little piece of trivia go ahead the working title for A New Hope was Blue Harvest, so that people wouldn't uh, find out about Star Wars. No way. Yeah, it wasn't called Star Wars. I mean, obviously, when it was released, it wasn't A New Hope yet. It was just Star Wars. But the working right. title was Blue Harvest. Fun fact. Hmm. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. I came up with it myself 50 years ago. <laughs> okay, you want to move on to Empire? Yep, let's do it. You go ahead and go first. You go first. I got a noisy dog right now, so hopefully she stays quiet, but uh, I'll go first then. Okay. For me, Empire is nothing less the same. Okay. Uh, it's a follow-up to Take Care, New Hope, and it's many people would say it's better than the classic. Like Empire was kind of the first sequel that was better than the original you know and it's it's a little darker in tone both the album and the movie are a little bit darker in tone empire was a sequel where the bad guys won and it's like yo what that doesn't happen in movies our heroes got defeated uh one of our main characters is frozen in carbonite and i feel like nothing was the same kind of has that energy too it ends with uh too much and then uh pound cake and it's like, those are both darker tone songs, both incredible, both top 10 Drake songs. You could say top five if you want. Um, you know, I, I love Nothing Was The Same. It's my absolute, it's my absolute favorite Drake album. For me, I just have so many great memories associated with that album and so many not so great memories associated with that album. And I feel like that's kind of what makes it the pinnacle of Drake for me. It was also the first Drake album I ever listened to. Um, and it's one that I come back to all the time still. And Empire, I think, kind of has that hold on pop culture. I think 
Empire is a, a movie that really changed. Yes, the original Star Wars. What the heck do you have a hanger for? <laughs> I'm sorry. My ADHD is kicking. Okay. All right. The, the Empire, I think, has that hold on pop culture. Uh, yeah, that's my little spiel. Not too much to say, but I, it's kind of like a mood thing, you know? Like, you just feel like those are one and the same. For me, I feel like, you know, Just Hold On, We're Going Home was the biggest single of 2013, right? Or was it Team by Lord? Anyway, it was huge. It was today. everywhere. No. <laughs> Bro. Uh, Just Hold On, We're Going Home was everywhere. Everyone covers it still to this day. Just like, no, I am your father was everywhere. Like, those are two yeah. things that have a hold on pop culture where you can still hear it today walking through the streets. I feel like the the hardest part about doing something that transcends transcend the genre is the follow-up to that, right? So A New Hope and Take Care were something that just changed. I don't know if Take Care changed hip-hop forever, like a Kanye album would or something like that, but it definitely changed the way that mainstream viewed it. Mm -hmm. I mean... Take Care was one of those things where it was playing in your your highway halls, highway, <laughs> high school, your high school halls, you're playing it going down the highway, your mom was playing it in the car, it was playing in the club. Not my mom. <laughs> Not your mom, but some my mom. mom playing HYFR, yeah, dog. Realistically, like, the hardest part to doing something like Take Care or A New Hope It's the follow-up to that. And that's why I like definitely agree with your stance on nothing was the same because the Empire Strikes Back and nothing was the same definitely withstood all the critical reviews and all the people that had opinions about it. Yeah. Um, and nothing was the same, though, was one of those things where Drake was still singing a little bit and rapping a little bit, right? Oh, nothing so, was like, the same. I think a lot of people were um kind of torn when it initially dropped because it was a lot of r&b influence that people weren't really about which led to if you're reading this is too late but it's definitely stood the test of time and now well, that's I think, what I was about to say yeah. it's something that stood the test of time so i agree with that um to me empire strikes back um sort of had some parallels to like what a time to be alive and interesting very specific details just because when i think about empire strikes back i think and i hope to god i'm right but never tell me the odds um yes just me and Han say that and like what a time to be alive was really drake and future on like some really mystical nonsense just coming out with some type of make yeah. everybody wanted to hear and it was very different and it was something that had to live up to the reputation that was that it was proceeding no that preceded it yeah so like star wars had just by one movie already been built into the thing that it was which is crazy um and drake obviously hit after hit album after album singles features everything um and you know empire has it sort of takes the mythic quality um of star wars and really amplifies that or i think what a time to be alive is one of those drake album set or mixtapes where you hear drake and future and you're like this is crazy yeah like, and you're listening to it and you're like okay like this is one of the most wild things i've ever heard as far as like i believe it was one of the ones that he dropped without any mention yeah no right? announcement he pulled a beyonce he pulled a j just, cole to j cole just dropped it um but no and like i think that like obviously with drake and future it was sort of at the height of future that career, especially yeah. future um and with star wars it's obviously that's a so it's hard to like when you think about it right like empire strikes back was wasn't the height of Star Wars by any means. And what a time to be alive. I know it's, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, 
Those, it wasn't That's the end. literally the opposite of what you're saying. <laughs> I'm not going to cap on you, bro. I actually disagree with you a lot for this take. And uh, I'd like to get into why, if that's okay with you. Yeah, we can go. Okay, uh, number one, I feel like What a Time to Be Alive is a lot more of like a fun side adventure. Spoiler alert for my uh, next episode, I have What a Time to Be Alive as one of the Disney movies. And uh, I feel like it, that album is one that has not lived up to the hype that it was perceived, perceived with in 2015 the same way that empire lives up you know 42 years later um so i mean those are my kind of my biggest disagreements on that i don't know the people watching listening can let us know if we're if i'm right or if you're right or whatever uh but yeah i just want to say you're uh you're wrong okay respectfully you're very wrong that's fair but would you not agree that Drake and Future's album is like two sort of powerhouses just trading bar for bar at that moment in time. Yeah. Like they were both powerhouses, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And like that mixtape, they're going like bar for bar, just trading blows essentially. Right. And that's sort of how I think of Empire Strikes Back with. Vader and the other. <laughs> hey, Elizabeth, this man knows he's wrong. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, next then. I guess that um, you should start first. Well, hold on. What's your favorite song? In oh, the you're favorite? right. Uh, my favorite song from Nothing Was the Same. It is so very difficult for me to choose between two from time and too much um from time i remember we were at dad's apartment and it was super late and we were eating hot pockets we were playing 2k and you made up this freestyle parody of janae's verse uh where you're talking about being an itchy dog and uh that's that's a memory I, i'll just have in the back of my head pretty much every time i play that song um, but the actual, like, everything about that song, the Drake verses, the chorus, the production, it just hit so hard. I spit on a flip sample of that song when I was younger, and I recently found the beat again. So I might redo it and drop it as a 2022 Apex and see what I change and everything. But that song holds a special place in my heart. But too much, I think, even more so because it was my first favorite Drake song. Um, the Sanfa chorus and two super hard Drake verses. So, done seeing them. Yeah. I'm playing my songs on the outro. Stuck in the house, need to get out more. I've been stacking up like I'm fundraising. Yeah. No. Um, what's your favorite? Did you say your favorite scene from the movie? No, I was waiting for you to do your song. Oh, okay. Um, my favorite song from What a Time to Be Alive is. Mm-hmm. I don't know, because there's just a lot of memories associated with it. Yeah, fair. I think that's why Empire Strikes Back and What a Time to Be Alive just sort of connected for me, because oh, there's yeah. a lot of memories associated with both, but not like the most vivid, right? I just remember that time and that era. Fly. What the- <laughs> that was a fly, brother. This is what it's like living on a farm. You get flies and your Zoom calls. Um, It's got to be... Either 30 for 30 freestyle. I figured you'd say that. This is one of the hardest freestyles of of like an album for Drake. They throw the word family around too much these days. It wasn't a freestyle, I don't think. It never is. Right. Um, Or, I don't know. You can say jump man, it's fine. I wasn't going to say jump man, sir. I was going to say live from the gutter. You can say jump man, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) bro i i remember whenever uh 2016 when i was losing weight trying to get in shape getting fit you came and you stayed with me at the house for a few days a week or whatever and we were out playing basketball and we had that tape on repeat 
Um, so I definitely get the whole memories associated with it. That was also the bad Taco Bell night. You remember that? It was, mm, that was I remember tough. a couple of those. I literally was in the bathroom playing worship music. I thought I was going to meet Jesus that night. I was like, God, I didn't think it'd be Taco Bell that did me in, but here we are. My okay. favorite memory from the movie, I, I love the whole like Dagobah training montage. That's super cool. I actually just played through that uh, episode on Lego Star Wars. Um, if you have a Switch, guys, get the new Lego Star Wars game. It's really fun. I've um, heard that from several people. Yeah, it's really fun. It's not quite the same as the like the complete saga from 10 or so years ago. Nothing ever is. Nothing ever is. But it's good. So the, the, the training montage is super fun. And the... Uh, the whole like hoth scenes like the hoth uh, I think, escape you know, scenes yeah or... go ahead no hoth's gotta be my favorite for sure yeah um, i also love like it's kind of so i love and hate the like han and leia thing because it's like han, han solo is so charming but it's also kind of creepy when you think it, about it's it because it's, it's like weird. this girl she's like 18 and 19 and Han Solo is like thirty. Yeah, so but it's Star Wars. But it's Star Wars, so it doesn't matter as much. Like Chewbacca is two hundred and fifty years old, so. Yeah, that's fair. Saying. Yeah. So hot but, for you. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I guess that leaves us with Return of the Jedi. So uh, you want to go first? Yes. Um. I. Uh, possibly another hot take. I'm sure you do, my guy. It <laughs> cannot be as bad as the last one. Uh, nothing was the same. Interesting. Proceed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Nothing was the same after that Luke and Darth Vader <laughs> moment that we had at the end of this movie. This is true. Okay. Um, no, and to me, it's like, I think there's a lot of fitting comparisons with it, um, just as far as, like, it's the anticipation that everybody has felt of sort of the end of the Chronicles, at least that a lot of people thought for Star Wars, um, and not the end for Drake, but definitely, like, we've seen so far gone thank me later take care and then now it's nothing was the same so we saw like the progression of a lot of stuff in drake's career and that's what people are looking in for the last star wars movie so okay not with that so for for is there anything else that you want to add right now okay <clears throat> so for the same reason i would say that this movie is more like views uh as in I think Views is a really good, you remember that hype, bro. Views was advertised for three years before it dropped in the same way we used to have to wait three years for Star Wars content. Now it's like it's four months. Yeah. That, but, that was going to be my other choice. Why'd you change? I was, I was stuck between a rock and a hard place, but I had not used nothing was the same yet. And I refused to use it for, for a Disney movie. any of the latter ones. So yeah. I, I played myself, I think. A, a bit but yeah for sure i feel like both views and return of the jedi are like the comeback right the hero wins because in the last one and empire the hero lost and uh this is kind of the redemption and in the same way now that drake was at a low place before views came out drake was on um, top of the world when views came out actually but it was a it was kind of him returning to his toronto roots uh, a lot of people up in Canada felt like he had kind of fell fell from the grace a little bit in the community and this is him being like no I'm very much here I'm very much that guy and mm -hmm. since then a lot of people have like kind of opened their arms back to Drake there's so many wonderful Toronto references and flows and stuff and I feel like Views was really a, a, a defining moment in Toronto music and in hip-hop in general you remember like the 
the Snapchat filters and the Drake going on Fallon with the little Drakes everywhere and all that stuff, right? Yeah, uh, didn't he have like a, a lapel? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think um, so. Um, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that for that or was that for Hotline Bling though? It was for views because of he's sitting on the CN Tower and the art. That's what I thought, but I feel like I specifically remember that pink jacket. I also feel like, in a way, this is kind of the end of the prime for Drake. Um, and views was very, very, you remember, like a lot of people were mixed whenever it came out. It was very polarizing in the community. But I think, listen, now, six years later, is aged incredibly well. Like, and I think Drake kind of has a knack for that, except for and a couple albums that we'll get to in the next video. But I feel like Views has probably been the biggest um, difference between when it first dropped to how it's perceived now. Um, and I think Return of the Jedi for many people is also kind of the end of Prime Star Wars. It's the end of the original trilogy, which is, you know, I'm a prequel kid. I'm a prequel kid, so I grew up with the prequels, but I definitely understand like the Luke storyline is classic Star Wars. And when that wrapped up, it kind of was like the end of an era. Well, it, it quite literally was, but also it was like the end of the prime of Star Wars. I totally understand that, even though Revenge of the Sith is my favorite movie. So I feel like there's actually a lot of overarching parallels more so than specific things. Okay. Yes, sir. What you got? Yeah, I mean, I definitely see the comparisons, and I, it's sort of, I don't know if the end of his prime is inaccurate. That's why I, Eric, not, but it definitely was the end of. He hasn't put like out anything better break. than views since views. It was the end of a certain type of Drake that we were used to. I mean, and, do, you, do you think Drake's put out anything better since Views? No, to be honest, I think we've gotten a lot more radio Drake mm. than anything. And what's going to hit? It's like a, a, a different but, part of his career. It's a different Drake, right? Yeah. So what's your favorite song for the album? From Nothing Was the Same? Yeah. Was that the album you chose? To be honest, I forgot. <laughs> I forget it. Okay. Um, oh, you're not wearing your Nothing Was the Same t-shirt. No, I'm too big for it. Rip. Rip. Like, literally, rip. Um, for this thing, maybe. Fair. From time, I mean, Paris Morton music. There's, there's a lot uh maybe the entire album besides just hold on we're going home what's wrong with just hold on we're going home man you just don't like it because other people like it maybe <laughs> or because i heard it way too much yeah um, but i'll put worst behavior in that same category honestly it's kind of like, crazy 305 to my city um Not tuscan good. leather 305 no. to my city is probably the worst song on the album no, no, I need to know what people think about that. I brought the thrill five to my city. I get it, I get it. I get it, I get it. Come we on, did bro. it, we did it. But he's doing it over this super melancholy, like, pad. Is That's like an anthem-type cadence, bro. I don't know. I think he just kind of fumbled the bag with that one. Now that is a bad song, but it's just like... <laughs> It's certainly a filler of the album, and most of the songs don't feel like fillers. I disagree. Okay, but, that's fine. Um, yeah, no, and then, like, as far as my favorite scene from that movie, doesn't it have to be Vader throwing yeah. Palpatine? It, it does. Either that or Vader, you know, wanting to look at and Luke with his own eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and... There's homage paid to that. Okay. This is one of my dogs. Hey, Bentley. All right, buddy. Goodbye. <laughs> There's homage paid to that, um, I believe, in episode seven. Yes. Which yes. is super cool. Yeah. Um, that the, things don't go. The best of the Disney trilogy. Yeah, I, I'd agree. 
A hundred percent. Because I watched episodes seven and eight last night and I could barely get through eight. Yeah, that's tough. We'll talk about that tomorrow, but that is the stinker. All right. Um, for me, my favorite scene, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely one of the two Vader scenes, of course. And also, I meant to say, I know a lot of people didn't like the Ewok thing when it came out, but I I was like four when I watched this movie, so I remember the Ewoks so fondly. Cool, yeah, Endor is cool as a whole. Many little Wookiees. And uh, also, the retcon that Captain Rex was the, the bearded dude uh, on Endor with the Rebels. Super cool. Super cool. Um, so for me, yeah, it's one of the Vader scenes. And then my favorite song from Views is Western Road Flows. It can't be anything else. Western Road Flows is one of the best. For me, it's a top five Drake song of all time. Um, I think it's one of the best Drake flows ever. I love multiple Toronto references hearing it. And I know I'm a bit more biased towards this album now that I live here. And I've actually been on Western Road and all that, but it's honestly so cool to see Drake just pay homage to the city and uh, all of that stuff. So that's it really definitely is. it for me. Like Drake reminisces a lot, and we see a lot of what makes Drake who Drake is. Yeah. I think we lose a lot of that too because he was like a child actor, and you know he. He always references that he didn't come from that and he's never tried to be anything different, which I think is dope. But he shows us that there is a struggle even within the struggle, right? Like it's not always just like, let's get a job, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like we were buying pizzas because we were down to pennies. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. No, couldn't buy pizzas because we were down to pennies. Couldn't buy pizzas because we were down to pennies. Yeah. And I think, like, I don't, yeah, man, I feel like Western Road is just the, one of the best Drake songs ever. It's simple for me. Whenever you listen to it, you just feel that emotion that Drake has on it. You know, you feel that nostalgia, even though you're not there. And that's, like, that's one of the things that makes Kendrick so great. And whenever I listen to Western Road flows, I'm like, oh, Drake is actually, like, a top whatever rapper. Uh, I don't feel that way when I listen to all of Drake's music, but that song definitely. Well, and I think like views is obvious. Nothing was the same. I mean, as far as like, I don't like listening to just hold on, we're going home or worst behavior. Those were like probably the most popular songs off of that album. As far as like mainstream. It started right? from the bottom. Yeah. So yeah. Duh. Um, but like with views, I feel like it is like top, three what albums for drake Drake? yeah interesting i don't i don't hate that take at all i just don't think i can listen to it personally straight through and have the enjoy enjoy it as much as i can with like nothing was the same or take care though yeah that's fair there's songs on that album i'm like i don't want to listen to this right now yeah yeah yeah, totally. I get that. Like one dance and controller. Baby. Yeah, controller I don't like actually. But child's play too. Grammys. Um still here. Same. Nine. Great. Keep the family close. Yeah. It's a great album. Views is the title track. Views. Pop style was good with the features i i think it was better with the features than without bro that takes me this is kind of like a rapid trail but that reminded me when i was listening to if you're reading this it's too late on 6 p.m in new york drake said rapping like the throne it should be the three of y'all and that project was so good drake was so on one that nobody had a problem with him saying that in the moment but then stepping back and I'm like, yo, that's wild that we let Drake slide with that. The throne, bro? Drake on the throne? That's crazy. The throne of rap? Mm, maybe not. Jay-Z and Kanye throne. I don't think so. Nah. And it, I don't know. We should have a episode about Jay-Z one day. We'll do a lot. 
the best Jay-Z part is- of having your own podcast in a free format is we can literally talk about whatever we want whenever we want. I know hip hop heads will get mad at me and they'll say it's probably because I'm white, but Jay Z right. really is like a rapper that I had to fall in love with. It wasn't automatic. Right. Like Jay Z wasn't automatic. Like, oh wow. Pause. Like, <laughs> I swear. I swear. <laughs> it wasn't like I would listen to this if nobody else was listening to this. Fair. Okay, well, you let us know what you think of the original trilogy installment of our Drake. Why do you laugh at everything I say? <laughs> you guys let us know Why? what you think of our installment of the original trilogy to Drake album. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Disney series coming tomorrow. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you're new here. Uh, we did just start our uh, social media platforms we're on instagram and tiktok at the moment so be sure to shout out to them yeah me and odyssey so uh be sure to give us a follow and uh we'll see you guys tomorrow trevor any any wise words for the people wise words Mm -hmm. um no okay there you go (laughs) don't look to us for wisdom all right peace we made you think about it but we are not your savior